All right, kids, we're gonna finish what we started. We are going to make the disks that we pulled out of those DVRs usable. To do this, we need a desktop computer. And for the SATA drives, we need a SATA connection straight into the motherboard. We cannot use a USB dongle or adapter because that's gonna prohibit us from getting deeper into the commands list. I'm also showing off my lovely Dell Garage keyboard that is a PS2 keyboard so that we don't have to deal with any USB driver issues while running Hiren's boot disk. Going into the BIOS, making sure that the ATAPI CD-ROM drive is first on the boot list, it is. We're gonna go ahead and fool around a little bit more and then save and exit. Oh look, the computer figured out that I plugged in this two terabyte drive. This is a good start. Now the menu is going to come up. This is Hiren's boot disk 15.2. We're going to go down and select DOS programs. There's a lot of good stuff on this disk, but this is what we're playing with today. We want to go to number six, which is hard disk tools. We're going to select that. Then we're gonna go up to number one and we're gonna go to HDAT2. And we're just gonna let this run through auto. We're not doing any changes to the menus, just let them time out and run through. And of course it's gonna give us an error out and that's okay. We're gonna type M for menu and it's gonna give us another menu. Then we're gonna go find it again. So we're gonna go to hard disk tools and we're gonna go up to HDAT2 once again. This time it's gonna load up a lot more stuff. The contents of the identified device data is incomplete. Use HDAT2.exe slash W to enable wake up. And even says it twice. So when this comes up, it recognizes there's a two terabyte drive, but the access to it is extremely limited. Doing this check disk run, the drive's not even spinning. It's just faking the funk. We can also go down to the commands menu or the device information. Device information has got some stuff from BIOS. We'll go down to commands menu this time. View search. Drive not ready, command failed or timeout. So everything is zero. It can't read because the drive is not awake. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out. And we're gonna go ahead and type in at the command prompt at the bottom of that menu, hdat2.exe slash w. This time, it's calling up spin up restore. It's waking up the drive. Spin up command is okay. And it disabled power up and standby for me. Now we can see the drive. There it is, in all its glory, two terabytes of fun waiting for me to screw around with. So now we're back in command and feature sets and you can see power up and standby feature set is disabled. And that's the way we want it. If it's enabled, it's going to, it's not ever going to wake up. It's just going to turn on and sit and wait for the call. Now when it turns on, it's going to actually spin and that's what we want. We're also going to check out the DCO menu. I'm going to try to restore it back to factory. And it said no, it aborted command. Device is now in security locked mode. Wah, wah, wah. We also want to make sure that in the DCO area that power up and standby is disabled here as well.
Now we can go ahead and do a check. Now I would like to note that running this program doesn't always work on the first try. In fact, with this two terabyte drive, it took me three separate tries to finally get it to stick. Um, there was a reset try as far as the DCO. There was fiddling around with both of those um, PUIS protocols in the commands menu and the DCO. And it finally stuck on this third try. So just because it doesn't work on the first run, doesn't mean it won't work. You just kind of have to keep fiddling with it. The Seagate drives can be a little bit more difficult. I've noticed that the Western Digital drives don't take more than two tries. But once it's done, you can move on to formatting in Windows without any issues. I'll see you guys later.